Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayoyimi, the last and final Daf of our beloved Maseches Bava Matziah. So we were holding out the Mishnah, Kufiyot Ches Amad Beis, around hmm, 10 lines from the bottom. It says the Mishnah, Shtei Ginois, Zoy Al Gav Zoy. So you have Ruben with a garden at the upper level, Shimon has the lower level. Vayarak Bein Taim. So it's a bi level garden and there's sort of like a oh, a slope or whatever, connecting the two gardens. And there's something growing there, some vegetables. Who does that belong to? Two ways to look at it. Where it's growing from. Whose earth is it coming out of? Technically, it's coming out of Reuven, the upper level fellow. It's his glob of earth that's producing that sideway growing vegetable. On the other hand, whose airspace? <laughs> is it growing into? Shimon, down below. Right? So who owns the rights to those vegetables? They have a bi-level garden. Upper level belonging to Ruvain, lower level belonging to Shimon. In between you have vegetables growing, and it belongs to Ruvain on top. It's coming out of his earth. No, it belongs to Shimon, down below. Why? And the Mishnah explains both opinions. Imagine if Reuben upstairs decides to clear out his mound, to take his soil with him. There goes the uh, vegetables. Apparently it's coming from him. On the other hand, imagine if Shimon down below wants to fill up his airspace, fill up with dirt. In Kayark, there goes the vegetables as well. So which way do we look at it? Do we look at it in terms of where it's growing from or where it's growing into? Amr of Meir, okay, it says, So, since at the end of the day, Reuven and Shimon both have the ability to eradicate this, uh, to obliterate this, uh, they, they can both technically control. He can take his earth away, there goes the vegetable, he can fill up his... Space, there goes the vegetable. So what's the solution? Ryan, the only way through this is, take a close look. Where is this vegetable living from? What is it living off? It's coming out of the earth, which belongs to Reuben on top. And therefore, Rameer concludes that Reuben is the rightful owner. So we have Rameer, Reuben. Rabbi says Shimon. Amr Rabbi Shimon, here comes a compromise. It depends who, who has access. So, really, the, uh, you know, the, the, the proper route is Rameir's approach. It's coming out of Ruben's property that belongs to him. So whatever he can reach, whatever he can, you know, stick his hand down and reach, belongs to him. But the rest, the other vegetables growing below that level, which would be out of his reach, which would require him theoretically to go climb down and ask Shimon for permission for access, that's um, something that he um, doesn't really want to uh, <laughs> submit to. And she says, good night, Hula. It's degrading for him to come, you know, uh, come through uh, Shimon's property to pick his vegetables on a regular basis. So pretty much he gives that up. He makes it like Hefker. In which case it belongs to Shimon down below. So again, we have Reuben's garden on top, Shimon's garden on bottom. We have some vegetables growing midway. Ramir says, well, it's coming out of Reuben's property. Rabita says, no, it's growing into Shimon's airspace. Reb Rabbi Shimon says, well, technically it's coming out of Ruvain's property, but only, you know, only what he can reach belongs to him. The rest is relegated to uh, Shimon on bottom. Amar Kuli Amalei the alien Havi. Says Rabbi, you should know. All agree that technically the Ikari, the actual roots growing in the ground, belong to Ruvain on top. It's coming out of his soil. 
The discussion, discussion now which pertains strictly to the the growth, the knife, the, the branches, the vegetables. Who, who does that go to? Rameer Savar Shodi Naifa Basa Yukari. Rameer says it belongs to Ruben on top because the growth comes out of the root, which belongs to Ruben. Rabbi the Savar Loya Amrinan Shodi Naifa Basa Yukari. Rabbi disagrees. We don't necessarily attribute the plant to the root. It's also growing off the air. Nutrients are, 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 are being drawn from the airspace, which is technically Shimon's. So it's not so clear that actually, right? It all goes to Ruben. Actually, Rabbi the holds Shimon is a real owner. Now, this discussion pertains to other halachis as well. This point, this distinction between the roots in the ground, which belong to Ruvain, and the rest, which is up for Machlekes, Ve'ozel Tamayu corresponds to their opinion elsewhere. This Sanya, we have a discussion regarding ownership, regarding Arla, how to treat branches, how to treat something growing out of the roots, coming out of the ground, the trunk. Does it have its own identity? Or does it relate to the roots below? The Sanya Hayyotim and Agesa. So we have a fellow who purchased one tree in another person's property. So he only owns a tree, right? Reuben owns the tree, but Shimon still owns the property. Now let's say suddenly there's a new tree, a fresh tree, new sapling growing out of this tree. Who does that belong to? Depends where it's growing from. Hayyotim and Agesa, Umenasha Russian. If it's coming from the trunk or the roots, in both cases, Hari Elu Shabala Karka belongs to the property owner, the Vera Mayor. Because even something growing out of the tr- trunk relates to the roots. That's where it's sourced. So it belongs to the property owner, not the tree owner. Rabbi the Ayyam Geza Shabal Ilan, he says, no, something which sprouts out of the Geza, the trunk, that belongs to the tree owner. The tr- his tree produced it, which corresponds to Rabbi the Shita Bayas. Don't necessarily attribute it to the roots. I agree. If a new tree comes out of the roots, of course, it belongs to the property owner. So again, the same distinction that Shirashim within the ground belongs to the property, but anything beyond is a machlek. But the same discussion by Arla related halachis. Right? So a fresh tree, a fruit tree, first three years cannot be eaten. Right? What, what constitutes a fresh tree? You have a pre existing tree, 10 years old, and there's another tree coming out of that tree. Well, it depends where it's growing from. From its roots, okay, so then it's a brand new tree, it's coming out of the ground, but coming from the trunk, or coming off shoot of another branch, that's a machlaikis. Whether it's considered a brand new tree, relates to the ground below, or is it sort of an outgrowth of the tree itself? Right? So, correspondingly, we have a machlaikis by Erla as well. But first tree growing out of the Geza, the trunk, or from the Shirash from the roots. It's a brand new tree. Chai barley. You have to count a new. Did Rabbi Rabbi Daimer? No. I mean, I guess a potter. If it grew out of the trunk, the tree produced it. It's not a brand new tree. It's just a sort of an offshoot of the old tree. I mean, Asherashim Chai comes straight out of the ground. Out of the Shirashim, it's a brand new tree. You start the Erla count right here and right now. So basically, we have three instances. One is by Erla. One is by ownership. And one is by the bi-level garden, where we have the same discussion. Something coming out of the ground itself, all agree, relates to the property. Otherwise, there's a machlekes, a mayor, who says it's still rooted in the property, and Rabida says it assumes a new identity. Now, why have the same discussion three times over? With Srichi, each one carries its own unique lesson. Di Yashmin Kamaisa. If we only discuss the. Um, well, interesting, Tasis points out that the Gemara, for some reason, only has a, a trichusa um, on these things, on the uh, last two halachas, rather than on our Mishnah. So we're only going to sort of balance these two recent halachas. And we're going to figure out why it was important to have a separate machlekes per, you know, for Erla and for um, you know, the tree ownership uh, as well. Okay? Di Ashmina Kamai, so if we only discuss the first case, which is when a fellow owned a, a tree in the other person's property, right? Perhaps over there, Rabida says, you know, if it comes out of his tree, it belongs to him, because after all, it's, it's a question of monetary issues. So, 
we can afford to give it to him. Avul gabe arla di yisura. When it comes to a question of arla, where we're dealing with iser, so perhaps over there we can't just be lenient and say, well, the tree produced it; it's an it's an old tree. Ema moidel rameir. Perhaps there, even Rabbi would agree to rameir. We treat it as a fresh, true, new tree. Viyitma baha. On the other hand, had we only discussed the case of Arla, I would say baha come rameir. Over here, rameir says, yeah, it's a brand new tree because of Arla issues. Avol when it comes to monetary issues, perhaps we can be lenient. Ema moidel rabbi. Perhaps he agrees to rabbi that something which comes out of his tree belongs to him. Tzricha, that's why we discuss both cases separately and in, in both cases we say that um, if it's embedded in the ground it's considered part of the ground and whatever that produces is a ground uh, a product, a brand new thing, right? Whereas something which comes out of the tree, well that's a machlik is Rameir and Rabbi Yehuda. Um, Rabbi Shimon, here comes the third opinion, Kol she'el yon Technically, it should belong to the fellow upstairs, right? We're speaking about that bi-level garden again, but only in as much as they can reach it. Amrit v'rabiyanai. So, in the basement of Rabiyanai, they explain, Obavad shaloye ones. You know, only something which he can actually reach without endangering himself, without, you know, uh, <laughs> extending himself too, too much. So it has to be practical, it has to be feasible. Boy Rav Anan, Vitema Rav Irmiya. So have a Shiloh posed by Rav Anan, some say Rav Irmiya. What about if you can only reach part of the vegetable plant? Magiela Noifoy, Vein Magiela Ikaroy, Magiela Ikaroy, Vein Magiela Noifoy. What if the up, upstairs fellow can only reach the root, but not the branch, or the knife, the, you know, the branches, but not the root? Is it considered accessible to him? My, what is the Allah? Who owns the item? Take it, we we'll leave it unresolved. Omar Afraim, Safra, that was his name, Talmud HaShor Rishlokish, Mishim Rishlokish, he quotes Rishlokish, that how do we conclude this halacha? We compromise halacha of Shimon, that whatever is accessible to Ruven from upstairs belongs to him, the rest goes to Shimon downstairs. Amru Rabbonam, Amru Kamei Deshvar Malka, so the, uh, the people said over the halacha of Shimon, this uh, wonderful compromise to uh, a Persian king, his name was Shvar Malka, and he was very impressed. Amr Louis says, well, that's, uh, that opinion is very acceptable to me. And in fact, he praised Rav Shimon, Apir Yain, our grace, Namte, we will grace, we will give, we will grant Le Rabbi Shimon. He praised him and he blessed him, and that's the maskona, that in terms of a vegetable growing halfway down, we uh, technically consider it belonging to the upstairs fellow because it's coming out of his uh, property, but only in as much as he can reach it conveniently because otherwise it's not uh, practical for him to, uh, you know, to constantly access his, uh, you know, access it through uh, the, uh, the other fellow's property and therefore it's like he's being mafkirit, he's allowing Shimon to keep it. Hadron loch habayas v'aliyah, hadron loch mesechas v'ava metziah, v'aruch Hashem, we have reached this milestone, almost two-thirds through the Shas. Baruch Hashem, it's been an honor and a pleasure learning together. I've been a to so be able to join together and learning our daf every day. May Hashem give us much continued haslacha. Kizun tehet, b'simcha, to learn together. Ad b'yaz go tzedek, meher b'mein omen. Mazel tov, mazel tov. I know you the know is the so I know you know the you know is the you know the the you know is the you know the you
Nagil, the Nawas is the Zoy, Sato, you know, Kilan, who was the Oy, 